because there are four different kinds of people, there are different ways that different people can receive. Now, I'm not going to lock these in and say this is the only way a person can receive, but these are the general, most common ways for the four types of people to receive healing. Number one, Mark chapter 16, that's for the unsaved. Believers lay hands on the sick. So you got believers and sick, which means believers aren't supposed to be the sick, technically, that are having hands laid on them. Believers are to go into the world and as they preach, lay hands on the sick and heal the sick. So the first level, first, I don't want to say level, first class of person is the unsaved. And God provided healing for the unsaved by a believer laying hands on them. That's the number one way that God heals unbelievers, right? It's through a believer laying hands on them. The next thing, when, a, when an unbeliever gets saved, <clears throat> let's say they get saved and they are brand new. I mean, as I always say, they're so new that if you called them carnal, they wouldn't even know it was an insult. I mean, they what's carnal? What, okay, what, what do I do? Well, we find this kind of person in James. And he actually says, if there be any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. And then the elder will come to them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And then they will pray over them and they will pray the prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith shall save, heal the sick. Now, this is a believer, but it's obviously a believer that cannot get healing for themselves. So they call for somebody else, the elder. They don't know what to do, and it doesn't even scold them or anything about it. It doesn't say, you know, well, you, you shouldn't need the elder. It doesn't even say that. These people are so new, they're just like babies, and they say, okay, so when a baby gets sick, you take care of it. You don't scold the baby for not being able to take care of itself. So you call for the elder, and the elder comes, and the elder will lay hands on you, but they will anoint you with oil, and then they're going to pray the prayer of faith. And it's the prayer of faith that heals the sick, according to the scripture. And that sick person gets healed because the elder prayed the prayer of faith. So this is, again, they get healed through the faith of somebody else. Okay? Now, the next step up, you might want to say, is a Christian, but it's a carnal Christian. A carnal Christian is a Christian who goes by what they see, what they feel, because carnal means it comes from the, the word sarx, which means flesh. And to be carnally minded means to be fleshly minded, or we would say sense ruled. In other words, <clears throat> you go by what you see, what you hear, what you feel. Your body tells you if you're sick. Your body tells you these things, and yet your spirit knows what the truth is of the Word of God. But a carnal person because they go by what they feel, <clears throat> then they usually have to feel something or see something to know that they're healed. Until they see it or feel it, they'll go along with their body and go, yeah, I'm sick. Okay, well, let me give you a hint. First off, you are not your body. Amen. You are a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. Yeah. Your body is not you. Now, listen, I'm not, I'm not preaching Christian science here or any of that kind of stuff, please. Hear me out on this, all right? Your body is not you. Your spirit is you. Now, your spirit, contrary to a lot of theology today, your spirit does not get sick. Sickness that you have in your body is not because of spiritual sickness. Your spirit is directly connected to God was recreated in the likeness and image of God, and therefore it is complete and perfect. There is no sickness in your spirit. So a lot of people say, well, well the, the sickness in the flesh is because of sickness in the spirit. Well, first off, <clears throat> number one, there, there's the thing they forgot. There's a go-between between, between your spirit and your flesh called your soul. Now, your soul often thinks of the flesh or thinks like the flesh or thinks according to the things of the flesh. So that is where sickness can be, as well as in your body. But just because it's in your body doesn't mean you're sick. So technically, as a believer, your spirit has been recreated, and you will never be sick again a day in your life. Right? Now, now, however, your body can be sick. And people say, well, but I'm not sick, so what does that matter? Okay, that's not just semantics, Okay. Your body can still be sick, and that's not God's will. And God will still heal your body, okay? <clears throat> now, 
but because a carnal Christian, to be carnally minded is death, right? Why? Because it does not, it, it cannot be subject to the law of God. Is that what it says? Notice it doesn't even just say the word of God. It says it's not subject to the law of God and never can be. Why? Because there is enmity against it, right? You get that? Now, it means there's hostility. <clears throat> so you have to decide to put your flesh under. That's what Paul said. He said, I keep my, my body under. In other words, he keeps his thumb on it, keeps it under discipline, and doesn't allow it to do what it wants to do, and has to be retrained. Now, for the carnal Christian, believe it or not, God has made a way for carnal Christians to get healed. Isn't that good? Yeah. I mean, imagine if he said, well, until you get to be super spiritual here, can't do anything for you. Well, that's the way a lot of uh, people would act. That's what it's even been said sometimes that you almost, you know, and it's how a lot of people think that you have to reach a certain level of spirituality before God will do anything for you. But if he'll heal the sick unbeliever, how much more would he, is he willing to heal his own children? Amen. Right? And so the carnal believer, when it goes by physical surroundings, <clears throat> can be healed, and that is actually out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that we're talking about in just a second. Now, why is it? Because it's, it's healing through communion. Communion has physical elements. It has the juice, wine, whatever you use. It has the juice, and then it has the bread, the cracker, the wafer, whatever it is, all right? So you have these things. These are physical things that you can see, feel, and taste. <clears throat> That's why most carnal Christians, this is how they get healed, because it's a physical thing that they can actually taste, feel, see, and they say, okay, I'm doing this now. So I receive my healing now. Now, for the first about 300 years of the church, this is the only way predominantly that, that Christians got healed. <clears throat> In the early days of the church, very few Christians were healed by the laying on of hands of other Christians. We have really one example, per se, uh, with Paul doing it. And even then, it said that he perceived he had faith to be healed, and he told him to get up and that kind of thing. So you really don't see the laying on of hands for that. Now, you do see it in James a little bit where he says they come and they anoint them with oil. So I, I would assume anointing with all oil would also kind of include laying on of hands because you kind of got to be there physically to do it, right? <clears throat> so I'm just kind of lumping those two together. But now, so a carnal Christian can set a time and a place and a date to their healing, and they can take that and say, okay, by his stripes, I'm healed. It's done. And then the healing starts. But then you've got the fourth Christian, or the fourth person, fourth soil. And that's your spiritual believer. That's a spiritually minded believer. That means that they are guided by the Spirit and thereby by the mind of Christ. Now, you can find that over in Romans chapter 8. And in Romans chapter 8, it says that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. And if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, then he will quicken, make alive our mortal body. And what does that mean? That means that you can decide at any point as a spiritually minded Christian. And what does it mean to be spiritually minded? That means that you go by what the word says and what the, what the spirit of God has said in his word over and above what your body says or what any report says or anything else. A spiritually minded Christian looks to the word, knows what the word says, and says, that's true to me. Simple as that. And that's how they live. Now, they don't generally just visit there. They live there. Okay? Yeah. Visiting there and not living there is the mark of carnality. See? And just because that's why one of the reasons why God uh, had Paul really illustrate or talk about the gifts of the Spirit to the only carnal church that's listed. Think about that. The only place you find t Paul talking about gifts of the Spirit in functioning is to the most carnal church that he had. And yet, people look at the gifts of the Spirit as the most, you know, the ultimate spirituality. But no, the, why did he talk to them about that, you know, to the, to the Corinthian church? It's because it was happening in their midst, and they wrote him and said, we got this stuff happening. This guy started talking in a language we don't even, he didn't even know. And then somebody else interpreted it, and we don't even know what we don't know what's going on here. And Paul said, Well, here, calm down. Let me tell you what's happening. These are the gifts of the Spirit. 
and God has given them to you because you need help. And so he adds these gifts in for things that you don't know what to do. So God bypasses your soul, more or less, and works through your spirit to, through these gifts so that he can help you get where you need to be. Now, so, but the, the spiritually minded Christian, now here's the thing, a carnally minded Christian usually has to wait for an event, healing service, communion, something like that. Spiritually minded Christian, as soon as they realize something is attacking them, they can instantly go, no, and immediately say, right now, according to his word, by his stripes, I'm healed, it's done, end of story, what's for lunch? Right? They just kind of move right on. Amen? And so they settle it. 